look at this 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 or this these are not screenshots from different iphone models or different updates this is how much the iphone keyboard is changing in different places or different applications and i think that this inconsistency is one of the main reasons why the typing on the iphone is so slow and why you have so many mistypes but there are few settings we can change to improve it so let's have a look at it The first problem is that Apple care more about the form than the functionality. On most of the Android phones, you will find the number row on top. You will have a comma and period buttons on either side of the spacebar. And that means you can type most of these characters without any interruptions. But on iPhone, instead of the numbers, you will have this terrible predictive text, which we will turn off in a moment. And also numbers, comma and period they are all hidden under this button. And you have to toggle the keyboard every single time to reach these characters, which is pretty often and that makes the experience so slow. But it's not such a big deal to edit, look at this. When you open a Safari, you will find out there is a period key next to the spacebar. You might say that's a great thing, but it can actually screw up your typing even more. Because the spacebar is shrinked a bit, you might accidentally tap the period key instead of the spacebar, and it's not helping you with anything. If you have larger fingers, you might think that putting your phone in the landscape mode might solve all of these mistypes, but you will be wrong as well. First check that you don't have the portrait orientation locked. Simply go to the control center and make sure this button is not selected. Unfortunately, even this button doesn't solve the fact that this horizontal keyboard is not available everywhere. You can use it in the messages. You can use it in the mail app or in notes, but you cannot use it in other commonly used applications like the messenger or even on YouTube app. So I don't really recommend using this landscape keyboard because you might get used to these larger keys and then it will create even more mistypes in the places and applications where you can't use it. If you are often misclicking, why don't you exclude clicking at all? A lot of the iPhone users have no idea there is an inbuilt feature swipe to type in all of the iPhones. So instead of lifting your finger or thumb off the keyboard each time you want to input a letter, you just swipe to the next one and create a whole board. This might seem weird at first, but it does work. Even if you are inputting a double letter like the two M's in the word recommend, for example, just swipe over the letter one time and your phone is smart enough to figure it out. This feature might actually be turned off by default, so you have to activate it through the settings. So go to settings, general, keyboard, and here is the toggle slide to type. And once we are here, toggle off the predictive text as well. First of all, it works only on English keyboard, so if you are using more languages, it will again add up to the inconsistently changing keyboard, and it is not as predictable as the name suggests. Many times it's just faster to finish the typing than leaving the form trying to find a word on top, the next one doesn't follow so you have to go back to typing and that makes this whole thing so slow. And connected to the predictive text, I would definitely turn off the autocorrect as well. Recently it works very strange and instead of learning your slang words, your names which you are using, it's actually changing it to some words, even if I type it correctly, it might change it into some wrong words. The only time I would find this useful is when you are learning a new language. When you are switching to English maybe for the first time, so you might be incorrectly spelling some words. In that case, this autocorrect might help you. Otherwise, I would turn it off until Apple inbuilt some proper AI into it. But let's stay a bit on the language topic. As I mentioned before, the keyboard is changing a lot throughout iOS. But look at this, if you add another language, it will totally change the whole keyboard again. The numbers key is split in half, with the emoji selector moving next to it, and the globe keyboard selector taking the emoji old spot on the bottom. Funny thing is that you don't need many keyboards even if you are chatting in multiple languages. You can easily access all of these special characters and accents straight from your keyboard. Simply press and hold on the relevant letter. 
you can then simply move your thumb or finger over the relevant character to select it. But there are also some other special characters you can type in this section. For example, pressing and holding the currency symbol will bring up a range of different currency options to choose from. Pressing and holding the zero button gives you a degree symbol. And I should not forget about the long press on the spacebar. Thanks to that, your finger will start to work like a trackpad and you can position the tiny cursor anywhere you want and you can easily fix any mistype. So now you can easily go to settings, to the keyboard and remove all of these extra language keyboards. You don't need it anymore. One of the biggest differences between the physical Mac keyboard and the iPhone is the feel of tapping. You don't really get any feedback just from tapping on the screen. But we can also fix that. Since iOS 16, there is an inbuilt feature called Haptic Keyboard, which uses the Taptic engine inbuilt in your iPhone and it gives you some sort of feel every time you press the letter. I can't really describe it on the video. You will have to try it yourself to feel it. But I can at least tell you where to find it. So again, start with the settings, then sounds and haptics, next keyboard feedback, and in here, toggle haptic on. This is also the place to disable the annoying clicking sound. Just turn it off, nobody wants to hear every click on your iPhone when you are typing. But I recommend you to test the haptic, you might find it quite pleasant while typing. Just bear in mind that using this haptic keyboard might be taking a little bit of your battery. This level of inconsistency is so unusual for Apple. Luckily, I am always consistent on this channel, so I can discover all of these things and bring you new tips and tutorials every single week. So if you want to learn more about these devices, I recommend you to click on the subscribe button and then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.